Hi everyone, it's Camille Washington, your realtor friend and real estate broker here in North Carolina. In today's video, as you can see by the title, we are going to be talking about what it's like living in Charlotte, North Carolina and what you can expect if you are looking to move here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So I want to start with the most boring thing that usually comes up in conversation that people generally want to know about. <laughs> the first thing on that list is the weather. If you're moving to Charlotte from within the state of North Carolina, you're probably already familiar with North Carolina's bipolar weather. So <laughs> this will not shock or alarm you. However, if you're moving from other states, then you have to know that North Carolina literally has a mind of its own when it comes to weather. There are days where it will be completely sunny outside, like literally two weeks ago, and then a whole bunch of rain the next week, and then it's cold, and then it's back hot. It literally makes no sense. For most of us who have lived in North Carolina for the majority of our lives, we are used to this at this point. The temperatures that we get uh, during the winter, we're usually like around that 30-ish range. But it doesn't really drop that low like I've seen in other states like Chicago where they have like negative degrees or two, five degrees. In Charlotte, we do have a lot of tornado watches, but there's not like actual real tornadoes usually it's just like a, a tornado watch alarm that will go off and then as far as snow we also don't really get a lot of snow in comparison to a lot of the other states we usually may get like an inch of snow if the city knows about it in advance they will do a good job of salting the highways and the interstates for people however because i'm in real estate this is something that you guys should know if you decide to purchase a home and that home is on a public street then usually the salt all of that is taken care of by the city however when you are purchasing a home um, there is something called a private road maintenance agreement and depending on who, who that road is being maintained by it could be members that are within that subdivision it could be a particular company they will have all of the rules and regulations on how they maintain the road it doesn't really get that cold and in summers it does get pretty hot i will also say that the coldest time of the year is probably that like october november ish until about march and then i would say like the hotter months tends to be like april through like september the next topic i wanted to get into is the traffic because everybody talks about the traffic in my opinion um the traffic is really not that bad i don't know i don't feel like you'll be in traffic for a super long time to get to where you need to go if that makes sense Traffic really isn't that bad, but we do have a lot of speed warriors here in Charlotte. Also, a lot of things that I feel like people don't generally talk about um, when it comes to traffic is police. <laughs> For people who speed, honestly, when I'm riding around, I don't really see a lot of uh, police men in the highways and uh, like public areas. I don't know where the police usually be, but I usually don't see them. Um, if anything, they're riding with us instead of like parked off to the side. Now, I'm not saying that to give you a green light to go do whatever you want to do, but I have noticed that I just don't see a lot of police out on the interstates or streets or anything like that. And then also on the interstate, sometimes there's quick merges to where there's two exits where one set of cars is coming off one exit and another set of cars is trying to get onto another exit and so it's like this crossover there's a lot of parts in charlotte that are that situation which can be very dangerous you know especially if people are like rushing and just not taking their time so we do have a lot of that and also to add to the traffic frenzy a lot of these <laughs> a lot of places in charlotte they do not have good signage when a lane is ending or when a lane is running out or if it's only for a left turn only and so you will have quite a bit of instances or circumstances if you're new to charlotte and you're not familiar with that particular highway or interstate or just area in general 
where Elaine could be ending, you have absolutely not no idea and you were hoping to go, you know, straight, but now you're stuck in the left lane because you can't get over because cars are just going, going, going. Or it could be, you know, a situation where you are on the interstate, once again, lane is ending, and then you find yourself trying to hurry up to get over because you had no idea that the lane was ending because there was not appropriate signage or um, just like painted arrows to let you know that on the road. So I will say that they definitely could do a better job of letting people know when the lane is ending for people who are not from Charlotte or those out of towners because it can come in as alarm. And if you're trying to rush to quickly get over or to merge into traffic, you could set yourself up not for success. <laughs> so definitely being familiar with your normal route and where names are ending will definitely help you avoid accidents. And when people are leaving from work, you will literally see red and orange all around the city just because everybody is trying to get home to their families. Next thing I want to talk about is the demographics here. There is a lot of different types of people that live here. A lot of people were not born in Charlotte um, and you do have a lot of the students who graduate from UNC Charlotte who just continues to stay and live in the area. It is a lot of young professionals in the Charlotte area and I think a lot of that has to do with the opportunities that are in this city. There is a lot of career opportunities with high paying jobs and salaries. Um, which is why young professionals flock to this area, especially if you have uh, career aspirations in the healthcare field, in banking, in the financial sector, tech companies. There is just a lot of major companies here, especially in finance. Charlotte is known as like this big financial uh, capital area. Also, in regards to churches, y'all, there are a lot of churches. Like many other places, Charlotte probably has a church on every single block. Or if you drive two to three minutes, you'll see another church. So finding a church home shouldn't be that big of a deal. But in regards to entertainment and things to do, I guess I'll start with nightlife. I'm personally not a nightlife type of person. I like to be at my house, in my bed, or just at home at night. And so there's really like not a lot of places to go in Charlotte for like nightlife, like club-like experiences. Most of the things that you will do if you are into nightlife is go to the bars, go to the restaurants. You know, some restaurants, they will have like a DJ there. You know, you may go to some of the shows and concerts. There's a few of them that are located in Uptown. And we actually have a pretty, pretty good mix of people who come into the city to perform. So that's always very exciting when you have your favorite artists or, you know, favorite celebrities who come into town, whether it be a comedy show or a full-blown concert. But that's the extent of Charlotte's nightlife. So if you are a party animal, then maybe this is not the city for you. <laughs> There's also a lot of festivals and events that take place. Uh, throughout the year. I do have two kids and so I'm always looking for things to do with my little ones and I will say that Charlotte has a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of activities for kids and children and just your little ones when you are looking to have a family day out. There are so many different parks, so many different parks. There's one park that I go to, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it has this um, beautiful a riverfront and then you can just walk out there to the pier and just overlook the river and then they have soft padding in the playground area that is one of the parks that I like going to but Charlotte has so many parks so that is a plus they also have um, this really cool children's library located here uptown they have the discovery place we have amusement parks um, there's just so much for the kids to do and to get into in terms of indoor activities, there's Frankie's, there is bouncy houses. There's a lot for the kids to do to have a good time on a Saturday or family weekend of The atrium in Novant 
is like the big players here in the Charlotte area. When I had my second born child, I delivered at Novant Hospital and I actually have a video of my experience with Novant. They were a pretty good hospital. I mean, they have a lot of options. The caregivers are pretty good, which also reminds me of like doctor's offices. A lot of people always look for like doctors when they move here. I myself have still not found a primary care physician. There are good pediatricians here. I actually found one out in the area where I live for my kids. Um, I will also say that in regards to like pediatricians and like dentist offices and stuff like that, a lot of the offices here, if you are consistently like late to your appointment or a no-show, especially a no-show, they will give you like three times to be a no-show and you'll be timely dismissed from booking further appointments at their facility. So if you have an appointment, definitely try your best to stick to that scheduled appointment or you could be definitely dismissed from a really good doctor's office. So I, that has not happened to me, but they have made those policies very clear. Uh, Charlotte is home to UNC Charlotte, which is a public a university where you can receive your four-year degree. Then there's also Johnson & Wales University, which is a private university that caters to specific career paths. So there's Gilworth. This neighborhood is like in South Charlotte, and it has a lot of like historical homes, a lot of homes with charm, those cute little bungalows that everyone loves. This neighborhood also has uh, close proximity to a lot of the parks, a lot of just like green space. Next, you have South End, which is the complete opposite. Uh, it is very busy in South End. They are building a lot in South End, <laughs> um, and there's already a lot there. It's very walkable, I would say. They have a lot of the scooters that you can just pick up and go, a lot of like cycling, a lot of people walking and running in South End. There's a lot of like fitness and retail stores and eateries and shopping. A lot of people say that South End is for the younger crowd, but I mean, it's a lot of young people, like young professionals that live in South End, but it's very hip, very like modern and vibey. So if that's your vibe, then South End might be the place for you. Next, we have Noda, which is super vibrant, very artsy, has a lot of culture to it, hippie vibes, but it really has a lot of like fun, artsy culture uh, to that district. A lot of eateries and restaurants over there. Um, they also have the light rail that connects throughout the city. So if you're kind of looking for, again, that like high, fun, energy, upbeat pace, I would definitely recommend living in Noda or somewhere close to Noda. My best friend used to stay in Noda and she absolutely loved it. Just being like so close to the different restaurants, like you could literally walk there. There's also a YMCA in Noda for anyone who likes working out. Another really fun district that has a lot of culture to it, like artsy or whatever, is Plaza Midwood. It also has a lot of restaurants and whatnot. It's very close to Uptown. And again, they have close proximity to the park. It's parked all over Charlotte, so if you're looking to move here and you are looking for a good park, I'm sure you are bound to find a good park. All right, you guys, so in regards to childcare, I have two little ones of my own. Trying to find childcare in Charlotte was a bit difficult. A lot of these daycare facilities and childcare uh, places do have a waiting list, um, which I think is common in a lot of places. But depending on you where you're from, I don't know, childcare may be readily accessible. Well, I am here to tell you that if you're moving to Charlotte, you definitely want to get on a waiting list as soon as possible. And a lot of the uh, childcare facilities here in Charlotte, they do have a deposit to be added to the waiting list. This deposit can be $50 per child, $75 per child, just to show that you are serious about your child attending that particular facility and that you know you aren't just calling to be added to multiple waiting lists, going with the first one. So I would say definitely if you're thinking about moving to Charlotte and you do have little ones who are not in school yet, 
So I definitely recommend to look around at the different child care facilities. And I'm very particular about where my children go. So that is something that you will want to consider the proximity of the child care to your work because a lot of these child cares, you know, they do have the early drop off where you can drop your child off at 6.30 a.m. or 7 a.m. But then you will have to be there by 5.30 or 6 p.m. It's dependent on where you work in Charlotte, whether it's work from home, whether it is at a actual facility. You need to calculate that time distance from the daycare facility and how long it is to your place of employment because they are not playing when they have that, you know, pick up time at 6 p.m. and you're not there. So that is something that I would definitely consider when you are considering your move to Charlotte. There are also many support groups that are on Facebook that I will insert somewhere along in this video or in the link down below where you can connect with other moms who are in the Charlotte area where you can connect with nannies and of course there's alwayscare.com which is really expensive in my opinion a lot of the rates that they are charging on care.com could be like 17 to 20 dollars per hour and if you have a full week of work a full 40 hour week of work plus travel time on both ends that can easily add up to 50 hours a week and your child care bill for an in-home nanny will be very expensive. But there are moms in those Facebook groups that connect with each other, support one another, and they have like nanny shares and things like that. And we also have a few in-home daycare facilities. So there's a lot of options, but if you're particular about where your child go, which most people are, then I would say you definitely need to seek out um, child care, you know, in advance and kind of go from there to make your decision. Finally, I say the best part for last, which is our local real estate market here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this data is from actually last month. If you are looking to purchase a home in this area, there are a few things that you should know and be aware of. <laughs> so we are, we have come out of that crazy frenzy of 2020 of the multiple offers, like 20 offers, over asking price, wave contingencies, all of that. We have completely come out of that. And a lot of that was due to the historically low interest rates that so many people had never seen before. Those were some of the lowest interest rates in our history, which contributed to this buying frenzy. There, that has calmed down a lot. A lot of that has been mitigated. And while we are still seeing a few offers on homes, it is not like this crazy frenzy of, you know, even in coming soon status where the homes are just flying off the market. And so with that being said, we have had fewer sellers in this area who are listing their home and a lot of that is because you know some of these sellers have these low interest rates and if they do move then essentially they will possibly be paying a lot more for their mortgage because of where interest rates are today and today interest rates are at 6.4 range so if you purchase, you know, with a 3.25% interest rate, that means you are probably paying a pretty fair amount on your mortgage. And some sellers cannot fathom having to pay for a higher mortgage and receiving less. But despite that, situations change all the time. And when you need to move, you just need to move. That could be for a job of relocation. That could just be for relocation in general. Um, that could be for a divorce. Maybe your situation has changed. You've added more people to your family and need more space. So people are still moving, but we have noticed that less sellers are selling their home, which has um, contributed to a decline in the listings that are currently on the market. That takes me to my next point, which is the days on market. In all, our days on market has pretty much doubled since last year. 
So before, you know, it was this buy-in frenzy as soon as it come on the market, like day one, two, like it's already sold. Like you barely had a chance to even get out there. Our days on market has increased. So it's allowing buyers to have more time, a little bit more time to shop around. But I always still say, like, if you know that that's a home that you're very interested in, you definitely want to get your offer in as soon as possible and make it the most compelling. We are still in a seller's market, despite what you see. So a balanced market is six months of inventory. This means that if buyers continue to purchase at the rate that they are currently um, looking to purchase, then we would essentially have six months of inventory. For it to be a buyer's market, we would have to have more than six months of inventory. And for it to be a seller's market, we have to have less than six months of inventory. And currently our inventory here in Charlotte is 1.3 months of inventory. So it's still a seller's market, but because interest rates have increased, the buyer's affordability is also a factor. So with that being said, we have seen some sellers to when selling their home to provide the buyer with a credit towards their closing costs. We've seen two one buy downs with lenders in regards to their mortgage and just some creative financing options so that buyers can be able to purchase homes in today's market. There's also been some increases to down payment assistance programs for first time home buyers. Um, I know I have one preferred lender who has increase their down payment assistance for first-time home buyers to $15,000 if the buyer qualifies. And so those are just some of the changes that we have seen with the Charlotte real estate market. And finally, I wanted to talk about home prices. So despite all of this, home prices have still appreciated since last year. Last year, our average sale price was $429,000. And this year, our average sale price is $442,000. So the price is still going up, even for those who are on the fence and kind of waiting for prices to go down. No one has a crystal ball for if prices will go down or what exactly will happen in our economy. If you're in a situation where you are looking to move to Charlotte, to relocate to Charlotte, Definitely connect with a real estate agent who is going to help you navigate some different places in Charlotte that is continuously growing because we tend to see a good increase in property values when you are moving into places that is growing, um, where you see a lot of you know construction that is going on where you see a lot of new businesses that does contribute to the overall value of your home that is all i have for today's video i hope that you found this video to be helpful if you are considering a move to charlotte and if you have any other questions about the charlotte area or our real estate market please don't hesitate to comment that as well well, that is all, you guys. I hope you found this video to be helpful once again, and I will see you on the next one.